So this is a very stylized diagram about the blood flow to and from different parts of the body. Um, there are four blood vessels that are either entering or leaving the heart, okay? Um, and then there's also, I've got the liver, the gut, and the lungs. I also have the brain. You do not need to know the name of these two, so I'll be skipping that. But the idea is that, um, so on this side, anything on this side carries oxygenated blood. So I'll label it in red. And then on this side here and anything on this side, these this is deoxygenated blood, and I'll label that in blue. All right, so let's look at the heart first. So the idea is that the blood returns to the heart here, uh, and the name of this blood vessel is the vena cava. So the vena cava is one of the largest blood vessels in the body. You have a superior and an inferior. You may have learned that, which is fine, but you don't need to know it for the IGCSE. Vena cava is sufficient. So the idea is that you get deoxygenated blood. It's carrying a lot of waste products uh, coming into the heart. Uh, it enters the uh, right atrium, then goes to the right ventricle, and then it gets pumped out and towards the lungs. And so this one, where it's going toward the lungs, this is the pulmonary. So pulmonary basically means anything to do with the lungs. It's the pulmonary artery and arteries usually carry oxygenated blood. This is the exception. The pulmonary artery carries deoxygenated blood. So then the blood goes to the lungs, it undergoes gas exchange, so it drops off CO2, picks up oxygen, and comes back to the heart via the pulmonary vein. And like I said, uh, arteries usually carry oxygenated blood, veins usually carry deoxygenated. These are the two exceptions. The pulmonary vein is carrying oxygenated blood. Then uh, the blood leaves the heart and it goes off to uh, the body. And so this is the aorta. All right, the pulmonary vein, sorry, takes blood into the uh, left atrium, then the left ventricle, and then leaves via the aorta. So here, that one's the aorta. Um, and then it goes to the liver and the gut. You need to know what these are called. Oh, and I just realized the kidneys aren't on here. I will draw in a kidney, okay? There we go, that's it, that's my kidney. Um, we'll just pretend the rest of the body doesn't exist, all right? So, um, then you have the liver. Now, the so these are all, art, right? The idea is that anything going into the organ is going to be an artery, anything leaving is going to be a vein. So for the liver, you have here going in, Anything to do with the liver is called hepatic. So this is the hepatic artery. And then leaving, you have the hepatic vein. Okay. Uh, and then here between the gut, you don't need to know what goes into the gut, but between the gut and the liver, you do need to know this one. This is called the hepatic portal vein. So it is a vein, it's going from gut to liver, and I'll talk about why in a second. And then you have the kidney. So anything with a kidney, like the adrenal glands. So this is the renal artery going in. And the renal vein leaving. Now, why do you need to know these? You don't just need to know their names. You also need to understand what is happening in each of these locations in the body to... Um, to understand what's going to be present in the blood. Okay, so let's say, for example, we are looking at um, glucose levels in the blood. All right, now um, you should know that glucose is absorbed as from the products of digestion, so it's going to be absorbed in the small intestine, in the gut. Okay, and then the idea is that that glucose goes through the hepatic portal vein and goes into the liver. Now, the liver is where insulin works, so if the blood glucose level is too high, the uh, insulin that's made in the pancreas is going to travel to the liver and tell the liver cells to take their glucose and turn it into glycogen, which is the storage molecule, all right? Which means that this could have a lot of glucose because you're going to absorb it. But then once it gets into the liver, that glucose is going to get turned into glycogen. And so the, the blood leaving the liver in the hepatic vein is going to have a lot less glucose. All right. Um, the same thing with the kidney. If you're thinking about what is the function of the kidney, one of the, fun the main one of the main functions is to get rid of to filter out urea. 
right? That's what the nephron does is it makes, it takes the urea and it puts it into the urine rather than into the, it takes it out of the blood. So the idea is that if you want to look at this would, might have quite high levels of urea, but this, the blood leaving the kidney, the renal vein should have no urea in it, right? Uh, the vena cava is the vein coming back to the heart. It's right before it gets pumped out again. So this is going to have a really low blood pressure. So it's things like that that you want to make sure you can do, not just know their names, but also understand what is happening in these parts of the body to give them, like, is it going to be high blood pressure? Is it going to be low in glucose, high in glucose? Like all these things, because um, that's often what they like to ask about. So these are the names you should know for surrounding the heart and then uh, the hepatic portal vein, the liver stuff, and the kidney. Okay. Um, and then also spend some time thinking about, you know, where would you find the highest blood pressure? Where would you find the lowest blood pressure? What about... Um, uh, glucose levels and urea and CO2, things like that. All right.